Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Kira. I'm back with another episode of Major Things, and I am so excited for this new episode because today we're going to be talking about sociology. I'm partially excited because I actually learned a lot because as a psychology major, I don't really know what the difference is, and so I thought this was really, really eye-opening. Also, sociology is a fellow COLA major, so you know, gotta shout out College of the Liberal Arts while we're here. Now, you're probably asking yourself the same question I did. What is sociology? And as I started doing my research, I found an amazing definition on UT's website. Sociology examines how people build institutions and organizations and react to social situations such as economic inequalities, religious movements, race relations, criminal justice, and more. A sociologist studies these phenomena with a variety of scientific tools, including collecting and analyzing statistical data and conducting surveys, experiments, focus groups, and in-depth interviews. The goal of sociological study is a better understanding of how all parts of society are related. So essentially, you're not just learning how society works, but how society affects other people's lives. Now you have a little bit of an understanding as to what sociology is. Let's talk about what sociology looks like here at UT. Here at UT, we offer a BA in sociology, which is offered by the College of the Liberal Arts, and our sociology program is ranked 11th in the nation. I personally didn't realize how amazing even our social science program are here at UT. I mean, of course, we focus on business and STEM, but even our liberal arts majors are some of the best in the country, which I think is amazing and just goes to show you how amazing UT is. So let's get into the courses that a sociology major has to take. So of course, you have to take your normal government, history, literature, all of those courses. You have to take your UGS course once you're a Longhorn, and then you will have to take sociology courses. So these courses include Intro to Study of Society, Intro to Social Statistics, Intro to Social Research, and Sociological Theory. And on top of all these intro classes, you'll get to take some more fun upper division classes. And I did some research and some of these include Food and Society, Economic Sociology of Health, and Sociology of Race and Work. So what does post-grad look like for this major? Of course, the first option is grad school. UT does have a grad school for sociology, but I'm actually just going to link that in our blog post, so be sure to check that out after you listen to this. And I'll also leave links to my sources and to helpful sociology websites on my blog post as well. The next option, which a lot of people go for, is law school. Sociology can help you understand how people work, which could help you in the field of law. Fun fact, Michelle Obama studied sociology at Princeton for her her undergrad so basically you could be Michelle Obama. Another fun fact I love Michelle Obama. I doubt this is the last you'll hear about me talking about Michelle Obama because she is my absolute hero so just had to throw that in there just a little fun fact about me. However you do not necessarily have to go to a postgraduate school. You could go straight into the workforce working for a social service agency. However you might have to get a master's degree for some positions, or you could go into more corporate business settings such as HR or marketing, or you could go work in public administration. So now let's get into what I like to call the burning question. How much will you make? Of course, there's no way to know for sure, but according to payscale.com, someone with a sociology degree makes on average 60K a year. And this obviously would depend on the type of work you do, but I don't think this is a bad starting salary, especially if you're coming right out of college. This is honestly pretty amazing. So now that we've talked a little bit more about sociology, let's get into our interview. Hey, welcome to Major Things. So first, introduce yourself, tell us a little about your path to college and why you chose to be a sociology major. Yeah, so I come from a really small town and um, I graduated with like 104 people, so like not a lot of people. And then I came to UT, um, which was like the only school I applied to. I came to UT and it was just like a really big change. Like there's a whole bunch of people and I was like super scared. And I like started as a business major, but I did not like it at all. Like none of the classes interested me. 
Um, and I just felt like super disengaged with like thinking about the future. I didn't know what I wanted to do after college. And so I like had to have like a really brutally honest conversation with myself of like how I could best use the skills that I have. And like, I realized that I'm like a healer, like I'm in, like a really empathetic listener. And um, so I decided that I wanted to eventually become a counselor. So I changed my major to sociology because a lot of sociology has to do with like, like mental health in a social context. And so I chose sociology and like, I never look back. Like I love it so much. <laughs> That's amazing. I actually didn't know that about you, that you went from being a business major to a sociology major. I think that's amazing. I just, I always talk about this, especially in like the other interviews that I've done so far is that like you go into college thinking one thing and then like you think like, at least for me, I wanted to be a doctor and then I was like, uh, no, that's not for me. So there's definitely that struggle how did you deal with that struggle from being a business major or did you even struggle with that? Like the feeling of, Oh, I thought I was going to be this and now I'm being this. Did you struggle with that? I struggled so hard. I spent a year as a business major and it was such a rough year because I just felt lost. Like I, I would feel guilty if I had left. Like that was, that was my thoughts. Oh, I'm going to feel so guilty because Macomb has, has like such a great reputation. Like, oh my gosh, she's like absolutely out of her mind to like give this up. But I did it and I, I felt so much better. And like, I, I just feel like everything happens for a reason. And like, maybe it was just a teaching lesson for me. Yeah, for sure. So I know as a fellow liberal arts major, when I chose psychology, there's still some like preconceived notions about that. Um, what were some sort of preconceived notions or stereotypes that you thought about sociology before you actually started your classes? Well, the first thing I thought was that I was taking the easy way out, which is like a complete different belief from what I have now. I just think it's easier for me because I'm passionate about it. Um, but yeah, and it's just like the seemingly like it's easier, but, like, it's really not, like, if you're not, like, meant for that type of work, then, like, liberal arts will be hard for you, like, it, like, doesn't mean that you're, like, not smarter or anything, and then also, like, the fact that sociology was such an easy major to get into, because there's not a lot of people in sociology, so all I had to do was tell my advisor, oh, I want to switch, and then it, like, happened, there was really no application process for it. That's crazy, I know, at least for me, I always kind of get psychology, my major, and sociology mixed up. And so I don't know, do you know like what the difference would be or how do you like differentiate between the two? Yeah, so they're kind of cousins. They have a lot of similarities and both do discuss um, like mental health and mental illness. But um, I know that sociology tends to focus it more on like a relational and societal context. So they're connecting it um to like aspects of society it's like a lot of like a macro lens compared to like maybe psychology where you're studying like maybe like some physiological aspects of the brain um and it's a lot more um like individual based in psychology whereas in sociology you're focusing more on like groups of people like say like what is the difference between like black people with mental illness and white people with mental illness like how does the healthcare system impact them so it is like very similar but like there is a bigger difference and I think that sociology like works better with the way that my brain works which is why I'm going into um, marriage and family therapy in grad school instead of professional counseling because I like that about like the relational uh, aspect uh, to it that's amazing and what made you decide you wanted to go into I know you said you kind of like the relational aspect of it. What made you specifically think marriage and did you say marriage and family counseling or is it just marriage counseling that you were wanting marriage to and family and child counseling? Um, okay. I like, I like to work with um, like, like the environment maybe like that's mm -hmm. like a way to put it because like when you're doing like professional counseling, which is like the other path you can go down in grad school, you tend to focus on how the individual themselves can change. 
Whereas like in marriage and family therapy, you're kind of like looking at like how they're interacting with their family and their friends and their environment, which is something that like my brain tends to be like more like aware of that type of um, like relational dynamic than if it were just like the individual only changing themselves. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess I've never really looked into it and what the difference is. Like I'm always like, oh, family counseling's just making people's like family problems better, but it really is like examining the interrelational dynamic. I don't really know how to say that, but I think yeah, that's no, you got it. <laughs> that's amazing. So on your LinkedIn, I saw you've had a couple different jobs and internships. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think the first job that I really had that related to my field was I worked for the YWCA here in Austin, and basically what they do is they provide therapy to low-income families, and I was more, like, of course, as an intern, I'm more on the administrative side, so I didn't really have to do a lot with, like, the counselors and whatnot, but I did a lot of... um, I was a membership outreach intern. So I did a lot of social media marketing for them. And like, that's how I felt like I made my impact to kind of get the word out about like mental health awareness and especially for like our diverse population because their motto was like something about like being against racism, empowering women, like that kind of deal. So like, that was a pretty cool internship. So that was, I believe that was the summer of my sophomore year. And then last summer, what did I do? No, wait. Oh my gosh. That was last summer because I graduated early. (laughs) 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 This summer I am an intern for Austin Angels and we do like, like we serve children in foster care and they're caregivers. So we give them like we like match them up with volunteers and they get them like monthly love boxes. And in those boxes, there's like a lot of like support, um, like grocery stuff, stuff like that. And then um, we also have another program called Dare to Dream. And it's basically like matching children with mentors to kind of like guide them through life. And I recently signed up to be a mentor for Youth in Care. And she's like 17, so she's like older. And um, I like, I really can't wait to see where that goes because like, I feel like relationship like is like really important whenever you are in a, when you were like a child in care. And oh, and then this past spring, like before I started this internship, I also worked for a, um, like a, it's like an RTC, like a facility to that, um, like houses children in care, but like they don't have like, parents to go to and it's like a residential Same. treatment center yeah um I worked for the foster and adoption um section of that and I that's like my first exposure to the child welfare system so I think that's like yeah. another reason why I chose the MFT path because it has to do with children and yeah like it was like super cool I think those jobs like really made me like want to be a part of like the nonprofit industry like I think that whenever I do get my license and everything like something that I might want to do is look into being a therapist in like a nonprofit, like residential treatment center or something like that so those are like my jobs that kind of related to the field I am in now that's amazing I have always wondered well first of all how you even get involved in even the administrative administrative side of counseling and working with kids in foster care how do you find those opportunities so in case there's some other future UT students or current UT students that are looking to either help out volunteer or even get an internship kind of like you did yeah I'm not gonna lie like it is kind of hard to find those type of jobs I know for the YWCA and the Austin Angels job what I did was I like did a google search of nonprofits in Austin And then I like went onto every website to see if they had like an internship page and like how to apply. And that's how I got those jobs. And then for the um, residential treatment center, I, I believe I found it on hire a longhorn because it was like a work study position. So it was like still related to my field, but um, I was also like able to like earn money, like towards my financial aid through that. So like, you just have to kind of um, like search like, in different ways and just kind of like try and find as many resources as you can. 
Yeah, because I know at least for me as a first generation student, I don't, I didn't know how to search for internships. I didn't know how to search for jobs. And I think that's probably one of the most daunting things because you can get into a college, but you, there's so much more to that and everyone's getting internships and you're just like, how do I do that? And sometimes it's, at least I know for me, like I was scared to ask. And so I really appreciate you kind of giving us an insight into what that looked like. Yeah, so, no, I 100% like agree. Like I am also a first generation student. So like, I didn't know how to like find internships or anything. And like, that's probably like one of the reasons why I like switched out of business school was like, I didn't know how to find an internship. <laughs> exactly. It's hard. And especially in business when it's, it's cutthroat. It is mm-hmm. so cutthroat. And I'm sure it is in other fields as well, but I think for smaller majors and smaller internships, it's more about getting out there and finding them, finding them rather than just them being there. And you have to fight 12 billion people at a career fair, you know? For sure. Yeah. Um, so I know you said that you're working as a case management intern at Austin Angels, right? Yeah. So how, how much longer are you going to do that? Are you going to go to grad school? Do you have any other job opportunities or anything like that? Yeah, so I didn't mention this earlier, but I am graduating, like, early next month. I'm in my, like, last leg of undergrad, and I'm so thankful um, for that. And then, so for this internship, it's ending, like, a couple days before um, I finish my courses, so that's, like, nice, I guess. Um, It's, like, just a summer thing, but I will be going to grad school. Um, I just found out yesterday that I have been accepted into a marriage and family therapy program. It's, it'll, it'll be a master's of arts and counseling. And it starts literally two days before classes end for undergrad. <laughs> so I have back to back school basically, but I'm super excited. It is like a dream come true. Like I've been waiting for this for so long. I am so incredibly proud of you. I wanted to make sure that I brought that up on this podcast just because I know you through Blue Bonnets and I, whenever you told me, well, I asked you to do this before you even knew about that you got into grad school and whenever you found out, I was like, I have to do this. I want to celebrate it. I know how hard you've worked and I just want to let you know that I'm super proud of you for getting into grad school. I know it's a super big accomplishment. Thank you. You are so kind. I'm just like, still like reeling from shock like it was already kind of a shock to be done like in three years because you know like when you change your major you don't you kind of expect to have to stay maybe an extra semester or a year but I don't know like I just feel like like my passion for this field has like driven me and like pushed me to like be able to accomplish like things that I did not think I could accomplish Mm -hmm. during undergrad That's amazing. So before we wrap up, do you have any advice for people looking into sociology? Uh, Yeah, actually, I do. I think, like, if you're, like, on, like, the fence about it, like, maybe just take a class and just, like, go for it. Like, it, it is such an interesting major, and I think you can learn a lot from it. And, you know, it applies to, like, so many different jobs. Like, you don't have to be a therapist. You can be a lawyer. Like, I know a girl that's in pre-law. You can go into, like, politics. Like, there's so many things you can do with it. So just go for it. Like, I don't think it's, like, a bad major at all. It's just not very popular because not a lot of people know about it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to let me interview you. And I wish you luck on in grad school and after grad school and everything like that. I know you're going to be successful in everything that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is the end of the episode. But I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening again. It means the absolute world to me, whether you're just my friends listening to support me or whether this is someone new. I really appreciate you giving this podcast a listen. And be sure to share this with someone that you care about that might be struggling with their major, whether they're a senior in high school that hasn't picked out a major yet or whether it's a college student that is struggling with their major send it to them and it might help them you never know okay guys be sure to tune in next week when we're going to talk about a brand new major that i'm super excited about bye y'all have a great week